So we have no new homework, but if you did not get done your 15 one and two homework, try to work on that tonight so we have new homework. We, this morning, went over all the tools for the test, but now we want to go over the questions for the test. Now, we haven't really gotten to overlap of data sets yet, so let's just talk about when you approach a test problem that you're not quite certain how to solve. So when you look at doing a problem like this, we haven't formally talked about data overlap. But what do you notice here? Like, what does each problem have? What does the problem tell you? What are we looking for? Have you? Yeah, it's got dot plots, right? The number one yeah. dot plots. Justin, that's two graphs. Each, yet each multiple choice has two graphs, two number lines. Ooh, that would be like the same points. When we're looking for overlap, we're going back to yesterday's lesson. We talked about heights of seventh graders and heights of eighth graders. We just started talking about overlap. When we talked about seventh grade heights, and ignore that I'm drawing on top of this right now, but we said like we'd have heights like this, and eighth grade might have heights like this. And I did not change my color. But this whole region is overlap wherever an eighth grader's height overlaps with seventh graders height they don't have to be exactly the same they just have to overlap so what we're doing is identifying how many points on here overlap in each set and really one of the easiest things that you could do is how many points don't overlap so you can approach this two different ways how many points are there overlapping or how many points are there alone let's look at one and look at alone points all these zeros are alone all these one are alone because there's no zeros or ones down here. But then this 11 is alone because there's no 11 up here. But all of these points overlap with each other because they exist in the same locations. Does that make sense? These points are out there alone. These points are out there alone, but these points occupy the same space. This data set goes from 0 to 10. This data set goes from 2 to 11. They overlap from 2 to 10. That range is their overlap. Because 11 is by itself, 0, 1 by, by themselves. So then, what points in B, we're going down to B, what points in B are alone, Casey? So would the nines overlap with the bottom data set? So how far does the data set go in B? In the bottom uh, data set, where does it start? Where does it end? Uh, it's, it's the bottom one? Yeah. Starts at 1, ends at 10. Does 9 fall into that range? Does it overlap? Yeah. Yeah. So think about this. My 7th grade heights, my 8th grade heights, even don't pay attention to the numbers. They overlap, they don't have to be at exactly the same. They don't have to match. So my points that are alone are these tens. So my overlap is everything from everything here and there, those all occupy the same space. In C, what points are alone? Uh, so this one actually has overlap. The zero is alone because the this set does not have anything out beyond one. This top set stops at 11. The bottom set stops at 11. So everything from 1 to 11 would be overlapping, actually. And then in D, what points are alone? Andrew? One and 11. The 1 in the top and the 11 at the bottom. So all of these points are occupying the same spaces, are overlapping. Which set has the most points in the overlapped regions? Anthony? How many points? 18 or something like that. You would go through and count. This one has a decent amount in the overlapped region. This one's got a good amount. This one's only missing one. So if we count how many points here, compared to how many points there, somebody count C, some other people count D. 
How many points are in the overlapped region? Do you, do you have one of the counts? No, I have one. Okay, hang on there for a second. Izzy? C has 18. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. And down here, it is only 18. So actually, C has more overlap. Because all these points occupy the same region. They don't have to occupy the exact same number, just in the same region. Yeah, they're, they're in the same region. These values are within the range of the other set. They overlap. They don't have to be the same. They just have to overlap. So if it was like 1 and 12, anything in between would count? If anything in the green highlighted here, anything from 2 to 10 here counts. Anything from 1 to 9 here counts because that's where they overlap. Anything from 2 to 10 here counts because that's where they overlap. So you got to figure out where do the two sets have quantities existing together. Like, and the range shows you the overlap. You won't have too many of those. Like, you might have one or two problems like that. Abby? So, like, pretty much if you just, like, made, like, a loop like this, like, from, like, 1 to 9, like, another one from, like, 1 to 10, and you, like, put them next to each other, yeah. you like, that same idea. Because realize that this data set doesn't stop existing at the 2 or the 3. It's a curve. So it looks like that. And my bottom data set looks like this. And if I put them on the same graph, they're overlapping almost the entire thing. So they're almost the same. All right, moving on. This is, and I'm glad that they're phrasing these problems like this, this is a slightly easier version of what I asked you to do on the one master that a lot of us got wrong with dealing with the range that a triangle side could fall in. They don't need the range here. They're asking for one possible side length. So when I have a triangle with a big side and a small side, I kind of think of it as two different ways. I either think about laying down my big side and then Normally, I will think about standing it up and making it a right triangle. Or, I think about using my big side, and then my short side will be my base. So if you think about possibilities, what's the one triangle rule that relates to side lengths, where Something and something have to relate compared to something else. Something has to be bigger, smaller. There's this really important rule. Andrew? Oh, no, no. Okay, yeah, not the 180 one. degrees. No, it was from one match. Uh, no, we won't use that here. That's that's kind of 8th grade, 8th grade, ninth grade math. Abby? 8 plus 3 has to be bigger than 3. In a triangle, and I would write this down, guys. Any A plus B has to be bigger than C. <laughs> Any two sides. So if I add up 3 and 3 fourths, that has to be bigger than whatever I make the third side. So could my third side be 10? No, that would be way too long. Could my third side be 1? No. That'd be too short, actually. Because if I made this 1, let's play with this for a minute. When I add 1 with 3 fourths, is that bigger than 3? No. What about if I make this 2? That would work. What's 2 plus 3 fourths? Is that bigger than 3? No. Nope. What if I try 3? What's 3 plus 3 fourths? 3 and 3 fourths. What's this 3 plus 3? Well, guys, I could have just made... And I saw some who's trying. <coughs> Two long legs and a short base. Now, the biggest that this could possibly be is if I make my red come out this direction and I make my triangle real wide. Sorry, that should have been red. <coughs> Bless you. So here's what I want you to write down. The 
the triangle limit or like the side restrictions, the difference between the values is less than the side is less than the sum. So if you do the subtraction here, that gives you two and a quarter. That will not work, and this is what we did on the test. If you do the addition, you get three and three fourths. That will not work. But anything in between that does work. So that and this will serve you very well for triangle problems. Any two sides must be longer than the third. And check that all three ways. Does this add up to more than that? Do these add up to more than that? Do these add up to more than that? Questions? On three. Now this one's kind of interesting. This would not be as bad. It tells me B is less than zero and it shows me B is less than zero. So the first thing that I could do, since B is on the line and I can't move it, well, where's B? There's negative something. Negative four. Negative four. Right, if I count down to it, it's negative four. <laughs> Ailing that we're not awake enough, so we're going to shuffle up. First thing I would do on your scratch paper is write down that you know B is negative 4. You know that. It's useful. What else does the problem tell you has to happen? CJ? This equation right here, A minus B has to equal C, and there's one other thing that they restrict me. So that already happened, they already did that, but this, C being less than zero, is another restriction that they put on you. This is one of those situations where guess and check can work, a mathematical process could work. So if you are a guess and check type person, it told you C's got to be negative. I would place C first. Now the problem with doing that though, is just make it like negative 2. Now I know my C is negative 2. Now if we plug in everything that we know, A minus negative 4, well that's really A plus 4, and if my C is negative 2, How can I get my A by itself? When I have this equation set up, how do I get my A by itself? Abby, the card. Would it be 4 minus 2? Or wait, no, it would be 4 plus 2. How do you get A by itself here? Wait. Get rid um, of what? Um, you, wouldn't you get rid of the 4? 4, because the 4 is the only thing with the A. Yeah. To get rid of it, since it's adding, we, we divide. Ooh, not divide. We inverse operations. Multiply. Opposite of addition. We subtract. We subtract on both sides. We get A would have to be at negative six. That's not the only option. There's tons of options here. If you put your C somewhere different, you can play through a different option. Now, here's what I will caution you on. There are options that do not work. So, if I reset my A and my C, what if instead of putting C at negative 2, I get real crazy and I put it at like negative 8? 4, 5, 6, 7, yeah, that's negative 8. And then I get a, that same A plus 4 equals negative 8. I'd still have that same setup. Now my C is different. 
I take away that 4 and I get A equals negative 12. Mathematically, that's fine. Why doesn't that work here? CJ? The graph doesn't go that far. So while this would work mathematically, when I go to try to put it over here, I realize it doesn't work. And I would need to go back and edit my C. If you find out that it doesn't work, change something you're allowed to change. I can't make it positive, so I could make it, you know, negative 1 or negative 2 or negative 3. Try something else. Like I said, you got a lot of time. They don't put tons of questions on these tests because they want you to put good thought into each question. Questions on this? Question four. There are multiple correct answers. Let's look at what they tell us. We're going to identify a key piece. Right? Can you tell me something that they tell me that's important? It has to be a, it has to have a proportional relationship. Proportional relationship. And Brandon, what else? A is negative four when and B is negative three. I know. Sorry, it's just up on this screen. You guys can zoom in on your like on the test. Now my highlighting is going to be in the wrong place. But if you don't like how small it is, zoom in when you're on the test. So, a proportional relationship. If we drew a graph of a proportional relationship, what would that graph have to look like? Proportional. So, like the paint that I need to paint a room is proportional to the amount of space I'm painting. So, if I tell you I need one gallon for one wall, how much do I need for two walls? How much do I need for three walls? How much do I need for no walls? None. I got some of that. None, right? So Casey, what's a proportional graph have to look like? Well, you got even doesn't tell me enough, really. So it's linear, I think, is what you're shooting for with the word even, like it's consistent, and it has to go through. Guys, I would write this on your paper that we're taking little notes on. A proportional relationship has to have a straight line graph through the origin. Oh, and like the like the, like it's like four quadrants. And, oh, yeah. So it's got to be straight line through the origin. Yeah. I, I now we're not graphing here. I just wanted to remind you guys what proportional relationship look like on the graph. So. <laughs> We are told this is proportional, plus me. In a proportional relationship, I can build proportions. Now you guys, bless me, I did a little bit of slope in science, right? The equation of a line is the same as what it wants. It's saying an equation to represent this relationship. So you guys did some linear equations in science, right? Yeah, delta y over delta x, oh, yeah, that sort of stuff. That's the same thing you're doing here. What you're asking yourself is how far are we going up to go over, and that stays consistent, right? It's like a stair step. You know, the easiest way to do this, because it's proportional, build a proportion. So say I'm going to put A's on top, B's on bottom. While my A is negative 4, please write this down. My B is negative 3. What if I make this graph have an A axis and a B axis? Instead of X and Y, I'm going to have an A and a B. Do you guys know what A value or what X value is the easiest to find the slope at? Like if you could choose any value for your x-axis or your a, how we label it here, what's the easiest to use? Andrew? One. One. So if we plug in an a as one, 
will be able to actually figure out what your slope is based off what the B value is. So when we make A1, or you can do it backwards. If you make B1, you can figure out A. But if I do this, if I choose my A, I cannot choose my B. So then I just have to say, okay, it's B. Because what I'm trying to figure out is an equation for what does B equal or what does A equal. B is going to be related to A. A is going to be related to B. I can now cross multiply. Go on the calculator! Gravity works. By the way, this is our amazing victory award. Might as well see if it goes in. Oh, no. If that was real gold, that wouldn't have been bad. It probably would have done some things else. Broke my computer or something. You gotta make a gold shelf gold. for all. We your want stuff. a competition, and that would be good. <laughs> <laughs> that cord will hold it better. All right, yeah, so cross multiply. So go ahead on your paper, cross multiply. I'm fighting with my smart board. Cross multiply, I get negative 4 times b, and cross multiply, I get negative 3 times 1. So now we have negative 4b equals negative 3. A lot of equation work here, like on the test in general. They like to work with equations a lot. Now, Aiden, how is B connected with negative 4? Multiplication. Izzy, not in the room right now. How does she plan it? Maylee, how do I break up multiplication? You do division, break hearts. So negative 4 gets divided on both sides. I then get that B is negative, or sorry, not negative. We have a negative divided by a negative, so we actually get a positive answer. B is three fourths. Whoa. But, 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 B is three fourths when A was one. What if I made A two, or three, or some other value? Well, then B will keep changing. So now my equation is that B will always be uh -huh, three-fourths times the A. Or if I solve this the other way around, if... I don't know why I have a weird color that I can use. If we had instead plugged in for B, we would have gotten the equation that A equals four thirds times b. Notice that these are reciprocals of each other. If I flip around the relationship, I flip around the relationship. So, when you have a proportional relationship, if you plug in a 1, you're going to get your equation, but you have to remember there's actually an a here, because that was 3 fourths times when we had a of 1. You could also just set up the graph and put the point on there and check what is your slope. That's another way. But we haven't done as much with slope this year. So if you set up the graph and you go to point negative four, negative three, we could then determine the slope from there. Any questions? If I am a fair person, who knows if I am or not, but if I'm a fair person, I have a dozen cookies and four people. How many cookies should I give to each person? I know my cookies. You say zero. I say zero. Keep them all to yourself. Izzy, how many cookies would I give to each person? Three. Because to be fair, what you expect is all things come out equal. And in probability, that happens. Like when you flip a coin, if you flip a coin a hundred times, you will most likely get 50 heads and 50 tails. 
So we split the class into four groups. So we have these four groups, red, blue, yellow, green. We have eight days of class. We have eight days of class and four groups. How many days do you think each group is going to have to go? Eight days of class, four different groups. Shane? Two days. Because I would assume if he, so he's saying each day he selects a group at random, they have to read aloud. How many times do we expect red group to go? Well, two times. Blue should go two. Green should go two. Yellow should go two. That would be fair. Everybody gets two days. Does that happen? No. No. What color group does get two days of reading? They, well, so blue gets two, but then they get more. Blue, green. No, green. Green does get two days, and that is what we expected. What's frequency? How often or how many times something occurs? We expected this to occur two times because we had eight class days, four groups. This was our expected frequency. Expected. So if expected frequency, when you saw that threw you off, I would write down that expected frequency equals the total occurrences divided by how many groups or whatever you're looking at. In this problem, it's groups. We have our total class days of the eight. We have four groups. We expect two, two days for every group. So there, green comes out as expected. Nobody else does. And yellow got off the hook. They didn't have to read at all. Uh -huh. Yellow's probably the one that like, hid in the corner. Like, oh, I well, he selected the groups at random, like, not by who he saw. So hiding in the corner wouldn't really help. And that could happen. Like, yep, like, if you were selecting at random, yellow only has a 25% chance of getting selected. So it has a 75% chance of not being chosen. So if you have a better chance of not being chosen than you do of being chosen. Cross sections. Remember back to that weird video that we watched from the PBS Math Club with the slicer, the Supermatic oh, yeah. Slicer 3000, whatever. If we look at a pyramid, we look at a pyramid, notice we're not talking prisms, those are too easy. We're not talking cylinders, those are moderately easy. We're talking pyramid. Do you have something important to say? Do you need to go to the office? Because I've corrected you like five times in the past two days. So, do you need a reminder on student behaviors that are appropriate, or can you figure this out? Do you need to move yourself? Can you control yourself around those other gentlemen? Show me that you can. Otherwise, we'll have a conversation. If I slice parallel, well, crap, I need to know what parallel means, I guess. And I need to know what perpendicular means, I guess. What does parallel mean? Sorry, I was doing that for a moment. Anthony, what's parallel mean? Be careful using horizontal. Because if I tell you to go parallel to the base and I turn it like this, yeah, so be careful using horizontal. But I like your, your reference, your image. It's the same direction always. So if my arms are parallel, if I move one of them, I have to move the other. So if I go parallel to the base, well, Anthony, what's my base here? The square. So if I slice through it parallel to the base, what shape am I going to get? A square. And that's the only one. Sorry, I forgot that these were already up here selected. If I go perpendicular, perpendicular means it meets at a... Meets at a what kind of angle? 90 degree angle. Meets at a right angle. So, I go through the apex. Guys, the apex on the pyramid is just the top guy. It's that top point. It is, it's, well, any of these are vertexes. This is the special vertex oh, called the apex. It's the king's vertex. Yes. That's so, if we go vertically, any way that we go, as long as we're perpendicular to the base, what sort of shape am I going to get? A triangle. 
What if I go not through the vertex? Well, square. Not squares, trapezoid. Because oh, yeah. think about it, if I cut across here, oh, then down yeah. these sides, then across the bottom, I'm going to get a weird... So it would look like... Um, something like that, except these okay. slopes should be the same. Okay. Something resembling okay. close to that. All right, questions on how we figure that out? Sorry that these answers are in here. I should have reloaded the page, but uh. That reminded me of like absolute value. It would go like straight line. Absolute value. And equal sign. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Well, I had a positive 7, I had a negative 12, I had a positive 2, I had a positive 1. That was worse. What would my net change have been without Tuesday and Thursday? Well, when I add these up, 7, 2, and 1 make a positive 10. Negative 12, I really get negative 2. So when I add back in Tuesday, Thursday, we need to get to negative 15. How much more or what change Justin needs to happen? Uh, it could be from anywhere from negative 14 to negative 2 for the first one. Ooh, so we are at negative 2 right now. So when you said negative 13, that's how much more negative we need to get where we need to get. So if you made Tuesday negative 13, then Thursday would have no change. But what if we made Tuesday negative 10? Then Thursday would need to be negative 3. What if you made Tuesday negative 6? People don't like the 6 and the 7. Yeah, 6 and 7 make 13. Just like 7 and 8 make 15, just get used to the interesting. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of options. So you can really, we could list a bunch more, but we don't need to. Are there questions on why there's a bunch of options? Because you're filling in two different boxes that these two boxes, all I care about, are that Tuesday and Thursday together make negative 13. Um, However they do it doesn't matter. They just have to together make negative 13. So you pretty much had to do like that addition and stuff? Yep, and, like, we had answer, to figure this out first. And the answer had to be some answer that would equal 13. Well, we have to well, make it that. that way. Yeah. All of these options that I listed, yeah. And I could also use positives. I could say positive 15, negative 2. Because that's still, or sorry, negative 15, positive 2. Did it backwards in my head. Because it would equal 13. Yeah, negative 15 and a positive 2 would still net negative 13. Oh, yeah. Wait, but you can't do negative 6 and negative 7. Wouldn't that be positive 13? No, we're adding. Oh. Remember, negative plus negative makes bigger negative. Um, by the way, tomorrow when I'm not here, because my house is getting a new roof put on it, you guys are going to be working on the second half. i got five minutes left, so don't pack up. You guys are going to be working on the second half of this test, and then we'll review again on Friday. We'll do more review there. Um, I will be in class. I'm going to try to set up a talent show Thursday night so that I can be in the class on Friday. This tells me that my perimeter of my square, 16x plus 24. Go ahead and write this down on your paper. Perimeter, they tell me 16x plus 24. Oh, I was going to say. Yeah, I do nothing can really do about that. They decided X was the best variable, but I don't know who they were. All right, so perimeter. What kind of shape do we have here, Andrew? We have a square. We have a square, and what do we know about a square when it comes to perimeter? Every side is the same. Every side is the same. So I could get the perimeter by adding them all up, or I could get the perimeter by taking one of the sides and then just using that. Taking one of the sides and using it to what with? Yeah, because if I know a side length, the perimeter is four of those side lengths. So if I want to get my side length by itself, then Michaela, what do I need to do to get this S alone? Yeah, we got to divide it by four. Here's where people make their mistake. When I'm dividing on the other side, I've got two things on that side. They will both get divided by the 4. So 16x divided by 4. Well, what's 16 divided by 4? 4. 4x, because you got to bring the x with it. What's 24 divided by 4? 6. Check it. 
put it over yeah, yeah. here, if that's 4x plus 6, and this is 4x plus 6, and this is 4x plus 6, and this is 4x plus 6, does that work out? Yes. Oh, yeah. Do not move on, well, do not end your test until you've checked these answers to make sure that what you think will work actually will. Questions on this one? You can plug in like math equations and stuff. You can do that. Yeah, it yeah, it could work to show to support what you're talking about. Yeah. And the second day, there's not many questions. Well, there's probably about the same amount of questions, but you get to use calculators. So the questions go fast. So this graph shows a proportional relationship, straight line through the origin. So it asks, what does this point 60 comma y represent? Well, what does, which axis, grace, does the 60 relate to? The first number in an ordered pair, which axis does that relate to? Is it? Yeah, that's the x-axis, right? So that 60 comes down here. So what does the 60 represent? 60, what is the x-axis? Minutes. And the y represents what? Y miles. So it'll be the car, tra uh, car travels from y, car travels y miles. 60 minutes is one hour. So they kind of play with you a little bit. They, where the questions have the 60 in it, these are wrong. You got to realize this is an hour, and that's how many miles you traveled in an hour. All the time we got for today. Tomorrow, uh, you can start on 11 if you want, but I'd prefer that you guys uh, work through that second half and work through that written response. Try to write out an answer. Keep that paper. We're going to go over it on Friday. Thank you guys. Have a good one.